Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers taser use, reasonable suspicion, and disorderly conduct, and is brought to us by Local 3 News' channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On April 13, 2018, Officer Cody Thomas of the Chattanooga Police Department responded to a 911 call claiming that a man named Polo, who was wearing green and black, had threatened a citizen with a gun in Chattanooga, Tennessee. While investigating the call, Officer Thomas observed local resident Nate Carter checking the mailbox in front of his home while wearing a purple shirt. The interaction that followed was captured on Officer Thomas's body camera. Are you Polo? Now what's your name? What's going on? What up, PHRs? Who are we calling about? Calling about you? <laughs> hey, how about you watch your mouth for your <laughs> kiss on the back of my car? Hey, listen. No, get your ass over here. You're not part of this. Come here. That's crazy. Oh my god. Instantaneously, bro. He he literally was like, "Yeah, you want." You're about to have a problem, boy. <laughs> you're about to have a problem. Oh, you're outside of your house? Well, guess what? Now I'm inside of your house. Come here, right now. Come here. You can't go for what? I'll shoot your <laughs> dog. I'll oh, shoot your fucking dog. What? Get over here now. Get over here right now. Taser deployed. Start me at 20. After Officer Thomas attempts to detain Mr. Carter with a verbal command, Mr. Carter refuses to comply and begins to walk back towards his home. An officer yeah, because he's on his front yard. Slowly walking away to his house. Oh my God, please don't tell me he kills the dog. I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Thomas tases him in the back. The Chattanooga Police Department's use of force policy repeatedly requires officers to use only the minimum level of force that is reasonably necessary to achieve certain lawful objectives, such as conducting lawful public safety activities, protecting persons and property, overcoming physical resistance, affecting arrests, maintaining control of an arrested person, preserving the peace, preventing the commission of an offense, and preventing serious physical injury or death. In describing the amount of force that officers are authorized to use against citizens, the policy states that, quote, under no circumstances shall the force used be greater than necessary to achieve lawful objectives. And, now quoting again, officers must always use the minimum amount of force necessary to accomplish these objectives. The policy also explains that, quote, whenever possible, police officers shall employ a progression of force commonly referred to as the use of force continuum. The continuum is based on the concept of increasing the police officer's level of control in response to the level of resistance of the suspect or violent. If a suspect or violator increases his level of resistance or threat to the officer, the officer is justified in increasing his level of control. When determining the amount of force that is appropriate to use in a particular situation, the policy notes that officers should consider the nature of the offense, the behavior of the subject against whom force is to be used, physical size and conditioning, the feasibility or availability of alternative actions, location. Chat's a bunch of snitches, by the way. Kaya, place. But thank you. Thank you for snitching because uh, I don't want her to have boo boos on her elbows. What? SFPD is looking for a man that looks like you? Bro, stop. Come on, man. Well, luckily, it don't look like me, okay? We're good. And the availability of additional officers. The policy also includes a chart. Lawyer Kevin made a video about you?
I don't even wear that many rings nowadays. Like, what? I wear a normal amount of rings. Y'all are crazy. Y'all are crazy for this one. That lists the type of force that's appropriate for various levels of resistance. In this situation, Mr. Carter's actions would likely be considered quote unquote passive resistance, which the policy defines as quote, physical actions that do not attempt to prevent officer's attempt of control, but are not in compliance with an officer's orders or actions. The chart lists the corresponding officer response for passive resistance as quote unquote soft, empty hand control, which the policy defines as a use of force without the aid of any equipment or weapons that includes now quoting, empty hand escort controls, pressure points, and come-alongs that have a minimal chance of inflicting injury. The use of a taser, also known as a conducted electrical weapon, or CEW, is not permitted unless the subject is engaged in quote-unquote defensive resistance, which the policy defines as quote, physical actions which attempt to prevent officers' control, which are non-threatening in nature. Further, the policy specifically limits the use of CEWs to situations where verbal commands have failed to bring about the subject's compliance, the subject has exhibited so called <laughs> yeah this this is one of those hey man too long didn't read okay <laughs> yeah this would make a lot of sense if i knew how to read type situations okay i ain't reading all of that <laughs> defensive resistance and probable cause was established on the subject before they evaded or resisted the officer. Now it should be noted that the version of the use of force policy that's publicly available was not issued until June of 2020, about two years after this encounter occurred. However, assuming that a similar policy was in place at the time of this interaction, it is- wow, They didn't even write this before 2020. They got woke after George Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they're talking about, brother. I feel bad. This artist is, is is very talented, and I wish you well in your endeavors, okay? I feel bad that I made fun of them. I didn't make fun of them, but, like, I just said it has ominous energy. I don't know what it is. It is highly likely that Officer Thomas's decision to tase Mr. Carter was a violation of the Chattanooga PD's use of force policy, as Officer Thomas did not have probable cause to arrest Mr. Carter at the time he approached him, and Mr. Carter did not appear to engage in defensive resistance. Hey, show me your defense! Oh my god, the funniest thing is after tasing him, he's just screaming, show me your hands. Clearly, air, start me some cars. Oh, he has his. Oh, he had. He busted That's out the lethal. Back in the house. Get your ass out here. Show me your hand. Oh my God! After he fucking he dropped the non-lethal, less than lethal, sorry, and took out the lethal, and is like asking for cars to come in. Get your ass out here now! Get your ass over here now! I want to shoot your now! Oh my god. Bro bro who's doing the, the bro's doing the Israel policy. He's like, oh yeah, if you don't comply, I'm gonna start killing things that you love. Okay. Sorry. Okay, I I am I'm in awe of how scared this man is of a situation entirely of his own creation. Like, he literally, he literally went Xbox lobby mode for no reason. Like, like normally you watch cops like escalate, okay? Slowly but surely. Sometimes they go zero to 90 and then a 100. This dude went zero to 200 and then cranked it out, bass, bass boosted, maxed out. I don't even know what level he's on right now. Like his, his microphone is peaking. His body camera microphone is peaking and beyond the peak. Murat! Yemeğin geldi. Dört dakika, beş dakika önce. E ne yapayım oğlum? Hold on, I'm moving my 
car in front of the house. Huh? I'm moving my car in front of the house. I have a unit go to the back of the house. We got two units up front. Have That's a like unit go to, to the house. back of the house. The taser has been deployed. Come We're still working on getting Come them inside, outside. Come out. Get Bro, why would he come out? You're gonna fucking air him out. You're gonna put holes in this man. Hey, sweetie, come here. Come here. It's okay. Y'all come here. Hey, y'all come here. Everything's okay. You stay right there. Hey, you come over there. You go over there. Bro is literally fucking pointing a gun. At the goddamn dude in front of his daughters. What the fuck? Come here now! Come here now! Get away from the door! I'm taking my mail off! Man, I'm just laying on the ground for you! Is it necessary? Man, for you! Are you serious? I took my mail! Y'all got my kids on here? Why are y'all doing that? Can I take my mail? Can I talk with somebody else? I'm tight. I'm definitely handcuffed too tight. Who cares? Get in the car. Who cares? Get in the car. Man, for real. For real. Get in the car. Oh, I popped my cherry. Taser. Popped my cherry. Taser. He did. He got, he got popped and then rode it for a minute. And then he slammed the door and the bars popped off. So I don't know if it actually hit him or not. Huh? Uh, he got barbs in his back. His info and why I'm here. This guy. Yeah. Oh, I'll go talk to him. I need to calm down. I need to right. calm down? Yeah, bitch, you should have. You called, correct? Yeah, yeah. Was this about him, correct? No, no, no. It was, the, uh, it was another guy, but he ran through the, he had the Glock. He was standing by that telephone pole, and he was talking about shooting up me and her within that playing card. He was talking about shooting up in her in Because when house. I walked up, you said, yes, that's him. No, no, I did. Yes, no. you did, because I walked up, and I said, who do you hear about? And he said, yes, that's why I'm here. And so when I started confronting him about going in the house, that's uh, when all this erupted. Because when you started going toward him to the steps, I was telling him, that's not him. Yeah, just grab his info. Thank you. No, he, he did not. He actually walked up to the guy and was like, are you the guy? And then immediately started yelling at the guy who he ended up tasing. I pulled up here, and he was standing out in the middle of the road. And I was like, well, I'm guessing this guy could be it. What was the, I didn't even hear what the initial call was. Somebody said they had a gun, they were threatening to shoot this guy. I said, hey, are you Polo? And he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Leave me alone. Like, he's calling you, shoot. He's like going like this, like, shoot, shoot. And I was like, well, I'm trying to figure out why I'm here. And he's like, he called you, not me. Now go deal with him. Wow, this conversation was so amicable and so different in his mind as he is directly lying. Directly lying to this other cop. I asked him, like, what is your name? He made some comment. I said, what? And he said, how about you open up your ears and shut your mouth? And then so I asked him for his ID. And he was like, man, what you talking about? Leave me alone. Well, in my mind, that's the guy who has the gun. I said, how would you come over here to get me right here? And he's like, no, I'm going back in my mouth. Or going back in my house. And he kind of stepped towards me and started walking back in the house. So I'm thinking he's going to go get, either do something with the gun. So I tased him right in the back. Yeah, dude, he was going into his house to grab his gun that is supposedly on him at this moment. He, he rode it for a solid three seconds. And then tripped up the stairs. And then he came back in the house, and so I pulled my car to where I can get behind it. So I didn't know if he was going to come back out and try to shoot. And then he came back out, but he was, like, still hiding behind the door. So I was like, he has a gun in his hand, and something bad's about to go down. That's when he kept going in and out, in and out. Y'all walked up, and his girls walked out. One's a boy. How was it? Officer Thomas summarizes his encounter with Mr. Carter, claiming that he saw Mr. Carter standing in the middle of the road and thought, and I'm quoting, I'm guessing this guy could be it. In the landmark 1968 decision of Terry v. Ohio, where the Supreme Court first established that officers may briefly detain individuals based on so-called reasonable suspicion of criminal activity, the court explained that in evaluating the reasonableness of a particular seizure in light of the particular circumstances, quote, it is imperative that the facts be judged against 
against an objective standard. Would the facts available to the officer at the moment of the seizure warrant a man of reasonable caution in the belief that the action taken was appropriate? Anything less would invite intrusions upon constitutionally guaranteed rights based on nothing more substantial than inarticulate hunches, a result this court has consistently refused to sanction. The court also noted that, now quoting again, simple good faith on the part of the arresting officer is not enough. If subjective good faith alone were the test, the protections of the Fourth Amendment would evaporate, and the people would be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects only in the discretion of the police. The Supreme Court further articulated the definition of reasonable suspicion in the 1981 case of U.S. v. Cortez, stating that, quote, The essence of all that has been written is that the totality of the circumstances, the whole picture, must be taken into account. Based upon that whole picture, the detaining officers must have a particularized and objective basis for suspecting the particular person stopped of criminal activity. The court then identified two elements that must be present for a stop to be permissible under the Fourth Amendment, that the assessment was based upon all of the circumstances and that the circumstances must, now quoting, raise a suspicion that the particular individual being stopped is engaged in wrongdoing. Although the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals held in the 2015 case of U.S. v. Chambers that, quote, a suspect's presence near the location of a reported crime can be a salient factor giving rise to reasonable suspicion, in this situation, Mr. Carter did not match the description of the suspect, who was reported as wearing a green shirt. And the victim claimed that he told Officer Thomas that Mr. Carter was not the perpetrator. As such, even if Officer Thomas had a good faith belief that Mr. Carter was the suspect, it is likely... Okay, there's one aspect of this that isn't being, um, isn't being mentioned here in this obviously biased video. The man was black. So automatically, if you're a cop and he's a black dude, it don't matter if it's in front of his own house. Okay? Just saying. That is, that is like, that was enough for him to operate on his hunches that a court would conclude that the circumstances did not provide him with the objective, reasonable suspicion necessary to detain Mr. Carter. Like, hey, that white one, he said, the dog will bite. And I'm like, I'll shoot your dog. <laughs> Mom is in route, though. Uh, for the kids. All right, so you hang out with the kids. Because we had Adam contact. count as a medical professional look at him here. I'm okay with that. Okay. But the hospital needs to clear him before he can do anything. Talk oh, to my God. How to write it. He does look like H-Bomber guy. What the fuck? That's... That's fucked, Chad. Yeah. for my life. The way you so described it is fine, but make sure you... Exactly like you described it to me, it needs to be written down. So what are you charging him with so I can tell the his wife? Uh, disorderly and resisting. Okay. And if Dan S could help me with make up anything else. What? Bro, does this guy not know that he's on body camera? Like, every part of this altercation is recorded. Even his superior, his supervisor literally was like, what you said is fine, but it needs to be in, like, if the events unfolded in the way that you're saying it, like, it needs to be written down. Uh, that's what I have right now is disorderly resisting. Officer Thomas states that he will be charging Mr. Carter with disorderly and resisting, according to Section 39-17-305 of the Tennessee Code, which defines the offense of disorderly conduct, quote, A person commits an offense who, in a public place and with intent to cause public annoyance or alarm, engages in fighting or in violent or threatening behavior, refuses to obey an official order to disperse issued to maintain public safety in dangerous proximity to a fire, hazard, or other emergency, or creates a hazardous or physically offensive condition by any act that serves no legitimate purpose. Bro was in his front now, while yard. the Supreme Court of Tennessee determined in the 2011 case of State versus Mitchell that an individual's quote-unquote loud and belligerent confrontation of officers, coupled with a challenge to an officer's authority, qualified as threatening behavior designed to annoy or alarm that was sufficient to support a disorderly conduct conviction, for this subsection of the statute to apply, an individual must be in a public place, which Section 39-11-106 of the Tennessee Code 
Doe defines as, quote, a place to which the public or a group of persons has access, such as highways, transportation facilities, and schools. As such, it is likely that a court would conclude Mr. Carter was not in a public place on his own front lawn. However, the disorderly conduct statute includes another subsection which states that, quote, a person also violates this section who makes unreasonable noise that prevents others from carrying on lawful activities. Now, while this subsection of the statute does not include a public place requirement, in the 2009 case of State v. Throneberry, the Court of Criminal Appeals of Tennessee determined that the fact that an individual repeatedly yelled at a police officer was insufficient to sustain a disorderly conduct conviction because there was no evidence showing that the yelling interfered with the officer's ability to conduct an investigation or any other lawful activities. As we discussed earlier in this episode, Officer Thomas likely did not have reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Carter, and he would have been able to continue his investigation of Polo if he chose to do so. As such, it seems improbable that a court would determine that Mr. Carter could be convicted of disorderly conduct under either subsection of the statute. As for the resisting charge, under section 39-16-602 of the Tennessee... Okay, but what's the section of the Tennessee uh, rule book that states that a hurt Fifi of a cop overrides all of these previous protections? Because honestly, it seems to me like that should be a law if it's not. But judging by the activity of cops, you would think that that is like the most important rule. First Amendment in the Constitution is not free speech or nothing like that. It's you cannot ever hurt the feelings of a law enforcement officer. You think it's like the first thing that they talk about. Tennessee code, quote, it is an offense for a person to intentionally prevent or obstruct anyone known to the person to be a law enforcement officer or anyone acting in a law enforcement officer's presence and at the officer's direction from effecting a stop, frisk, halt, arrest, or search by using force against the law enforcement officer or another. The statute also clarifies that, now quoting again, it is no defense to prosecution under this section that the stop, frisk, halt, arrest, or search was unlawful. And section 39-11- 106 of the Tennessee Code states that, quote, force means compulsion by the use of physical power or violence and shall be broadly construed to accomplish the purposes of this title. It is highly unlikely that a court would conclude that Mr. Carter's conduct in disregarding Officer Thomas's orders and retreating into his home would constitute a use of force under this statute, as the Tennessee Court of Criminal Appeals noted in the 2013 case of State v. Martin that the force element for a resisting charge was not met when an individual ignored several commands to stop and continued to walk away from an officer. Likewise, Mr. Carter did not appear to actively resist handcuffing in body camera footage, but if he did make any movements that could be construed as struggling against handcuffing, section 39-11-611 of the Tennessee Code permits individuals to use force in self-defense if, now quoting, the law enforcement officer uses or attempts to use greater force than necessary to make the arrest, search, stop. There is 0% chance any black person in the history of Tennessee has ever been able to use this. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. This is the most German ass fucking uh, legal rule I've ever heard in my life. Okay. It's like the thing I talk about in Germany that it's like not illegal technically to escape prison because every human wants to, every human yearns for freedom. So if you do escape prison, if you do somehow do a prison escape, it's like, you know, you'll be charged with additional penalties only if you, like, steal the clothing. Like, state's clothing. Stop and frisk or halt. Accordingly, Mr. Carter would be able to attempt to defend himself against the charge by arguing that the officers were using excessive force to detain him. I didn't figure out. Is, do, you, do you have any of this information? Could you pull that oh, up? I have it. Carbon well. Because he did the report. Hey, he didn't have his wallet on him. Yeah, I have no idea who this guy is. Uh, maybe he'll tell you if not, he's John Joe. <laughs> what are you doing? We're going to take you to Erlanger. What? No, I have a kid, buddy. Mama's coming to take him. Why are you taking me to Erlanger? Because you got tased. Is this what you taking me to jail? Yeah. For what? Uh, disorderly and resisting. I didn't resist the rest. Man, I came outside to check my mail. I had nothing to do with it. What did he say that I missed? Mr. Excessive Ford. Carbon well. 
Do you, do you have any of this information? Could you pull that Harbin up? I have it. Harbin will. Because he did the report. Hey, he didn't have his wallet on him. I have no idea who this guy is. Uh, maybe he'll tell you if not, he's John Joe. <laughs> I feel like any other place on the planet, any other country on the planet, this happens, any other OECD nation, this would be in the news every single day for a month, and it would lead to, like, the abolition of this entire fucking group. Like, they would literally be like, nope, we gotta hire new cops. Like, we are firing every single person. This would be national outrage. Straight up. Like if this ha I'm thinking of like Germany. Remember like when they when they uh fucking went after like entire brigades in Germany, like the special police or the military had like Nazis and shit, and they just had to pack it all up. I'd get banned if I spoke my truths right now, so I will instead just think it. Wait till the big liberal government, the nanny state makes it <laughs> so that it's illegal to think it too, brother. He said, the other cop said, well, if you can't find his name, then he'll just die in prison, I guess. We're going to take you to Erlanger. What? Mama's coming to take him. Why are you taking me to Erlanger? Because you got tased. Is this what you taking me to jail? Yep. For what? Uh, disorderly and resisting. I didn't resist the rest. Man, I came outside to check my mail. I had nothing to do with what was going on over there. I don't know, I came out of jail, but I'm outside to check my mail. Are you serious? Uh, I'm serious. For real? That's a heart attack. You don't care about no, nothing but your personal agenda. Trying to save your because you had no reason to even talk to me. You want to call to my address? You had no right to stop or detain me. What law was I breaking? What nothing? You did not give me any statute code in my Fourth Amendment right to tell me why you were stopping me. I mean, go on, bro. <laughs> Take me to jail. I will. You come to court. I will. He's pissed too. He's so excited. He's pissed too. Oh. Fuck you. Is it safe to come out? I don't want to get assaulted again. I'm going to get my mail. That's right. Don't have to go to jail for getting your mail. After his arrest, Mr. Carter was charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. But on November 2nd, 2018, both charges were dismissed. A complaint was filed with the Chattanooga Police Department, and the internal affairs investigation found that Officer Thomas had used force outside of the department's standard guidelines, submitted official reports that contained false and misleading information, showed willful indifference to complaints of a prisoner, and displayed behavior and used language during his interaction with citizens that was unnecessary and unprofessional. As a result of these violations, Officer Thomas received an 80-hour suspension in November of 2018, and then returned to the force. On April 2nd, 2019, Mr. Carter filed a lawsuit in the Circuit Court for Hamilton County, Tennessee, which was later removed to federal court. The complaint asserted claims including excessive force, malicious... Yeah, bro, he got two weeks off from the job. This is the updated article, by the way. If you want to understand how local news covers this shit, this updated article after the fact, after the legal battle, gives you a good idea. Update, 911 call. A uh, 911 call in Chattanooga police officer's report shows conflicting facts amid legal battle. You want to, if you're wondering why there's so many fucking little fascists running around this goddamn country, they get their information from local news. Channel 3 has learned more conflicting details on the case of the Chattanooga police officer being sued by a man who claims he was wrongly arrested. Body camera footage in a 911 phone call tell one story, while the officer's report tells another slightly different version of the events. Like, bitch, it's not slightly different. What do you mean? Also, notice the, the neutrality in the language here. It's like, uh, who's to say who's right? Dispatcher, 911, do you have an emergency? Oh, uh, yeah. Can you send an officer to, to 2108 Vance uh, Avenue? I, I, it's a guy out there with a gun threatening to shoot me. 
This 911 call placed a year ago, Saturday, landed one man in jail. Uncuff me. I'm not doing nothing, Carter told Officer Cody Thomas. But according to claims inside a $3 million lawsuit in the original 911 call that came in, it wasn't the right man. He's wearing green and black pants. He's out front row, the neighbor told the dispatcher. Officer Thomas with the Chattanooga Police Department responded to the scene on Vance Avenue searching for a man named Polo wearing green and black. Are you Polo? What's your name? Officer Thomas asked Carter. Don't be coming to my house. That's over there. Gone over there, Carter responded. The officer then used his stun gun on Carter, who's seen in the video wearing purple, eventually arresting him. I was checking my mailbox. What are you putting me on the ground for? Carter questioned. The use of force report Thomas completed after the incident claims the caller identified Carter as the suspect. On the scene, the caller tells Officer Thomas, that's not true. You're the one who called, correct? Was this about him? Officer Thomas asked the neighbor. No, nah, no, nah, it was about another guy, but he ran through the yard, the neighbor replied. The initial report from Thomas also leaves a key detail about what the initial suspect was wearing. By the person in question's clothing being described in the original call and Carter's attire not matching, Carter was charged that day with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. Following an internal affairs investigation, Officer Thomas was suspended for two weeks as a result of the incident. He's back on the job. Interesting that the other guy saying he can just die in jail is not mentioned in this. Prosecution, but. false arrest, assault, and battery, and requested $1 million in compensatory damages and $2 million in punitive damages. On November 19th, 2019, the case was dismissed after the claims were settled for an undisclosed amount. Overall, Officer Thomas gets an F for unreasonably deploying a taser on Mr. Carter in likely violation of department policy, maintaining an aggressive and belligerent demeanor throughout the encounter and misrepresenting essential details regarding the incident, such as claiming that Mr. Carter was in the middle of the road when he was clearly at his mailbox when the body camera footage began. Although Officer Thomas claimed to believe that Mr. Carter was the suspect reported in the 911 call, I find this contention dubious, particularly given that Mr. Carter was wearing a purple shirt rather than a green one, and both Mr. Carter and the victim informed Officer Thomas that Mr. Carter was not the perpetrator. Rather, it seems more likely that Officer Thomas reacted to to perceive disrespect from Mr. Carter, as evidenced by the fact that he told Mr. Carter, and I'm quoting, you're now part of this, after he made comments that Officer Thomas did not seem to appreciate. The truly unhinged behavior exhibited by Officer Thomas during this encounter demonstrated a propensity for both violence and dishonesty, and I seriously question whether a two-week suspension was sufficient to address these underlying issues. Mr. Carter gets an A-, minus because although he was somewhat verbal combative in his comments towards Officer Thomas and ignored some of his commands, he did not appear to violate Tennessee law at any time during the encounter and took appropriate legal action by filing a lawsuit after the encounter. As we discussed in this episode, Mr. Carter likely did not commit any crimes in the course of the interaction, even Fair. when he failed to comply Fair. with Officer Thomas's commands and entered Come on, his home. Man, it's a However, minus. it is important for viewers to note that disobeying officer orders and situations- Reading the victims is so unhinged. Yeah, no, he does it every time. I think there was like one instance where he didn't actually do it. <laughs> no, he's saying A minus because he, he did say get the fuck out of here or some shit, which is totally valid to say, except you can't really say it in America. That's the point. Does the cop get a grade? Oh, yeah, he already hit him with the F. Dog gets an A plus for being a good boy like this may be considered resisting or obstructing in states that do not recognize the right of citizens to resist unlawful orders and do bitch. not require the use of force to sustain a resisting conviction. That being said, officer- He didn't raise someone once because it wouldn't be fair considering how awful the cops were? Yeah, I remember that. Thomas's use of a taser against Mr. Carter was clearly unjustified, particularly given the legality of Mr. Carter's actions in Tennessee, and I commend Mr. Carter for pursuing accountability against Officer Thomas for this violation. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more. It is pretty crazy that in the United States of America, if you, like, piss off a cop, they can kill you. <laughs> like... <laughs> Like, they can just at least tase you from the back in on your front porch and only get fucking two weeks off.